South Africa is boosting its astronomy capabilities with the launch of another powerful telescope at Sutherland in the Northern Cape. The area is already host to the Southern Africa Larger Telescope. The Prime Focus Infrared Microlensing Experiment Telescope, or Prime, is equipped with the world's largest class near-infrared Prime Focus camera. Well, let's uh, t go to my colleague, SABC News reporter Ulrich Hendricks, to tell us more. A very good afternoon to you, Ulrich. Very technical stuff. What do you have for us? Yes, uh, no, quite a mouthful, uh, you know, uh, about this prime, uh, you know, but just to put you in, in, in context, you know, we've got 160 kilometers from here, we are building the largest radio telescope, the SKA, uh, just next door to prime, where we are in at the moment, we've got uh, Southern African larger telescope, and we, you know, the South African astronomy field is just boosted by uh, all these telescopes being built, but let, let me bring in Daniel Kahneman from um, SAOO. Uh, Daniel, tell us, um, Prime, what does it do? Uh, so the Prime Telescope is a new telescope, it's a 1.8 meter mirror um, and it's primarily looking for exoplanets. So it's uh, looking at the brightness of stars over, over the night in a very large field, so it's a survey telescope and it waits for two stars to pass in front of each other uh, and when that happens the light of the distant star gets brightened quite substantially and we can measure that uh, and if that happens we can see uh, the light from the the, from the, the, the star in between, if there's a planet, we'll see an, an extra little spark in the bright, brightening, and we'll be able to measure the size of that planet and the distance from its host star. So why, why, we, why do we need to have that information? What, what sort of research would that benefit? So exoplanet research is, is uh, very popular at the moment uh, for a lot of reasons. Firstly, we only discovered exoplanets or planets around other stars uh, less than 20 years ago. Uh, so we don't really have a lot of them to look at. Uh, we've probably found about 5,000 so far. Uh, and what that can do is tell us a lot about planetary formation. So in our solar system, we've got our eight planets. Uh, we have a fair idea of how they formed uh, and how we got something like Earth forming and where life could evolve and, and arise, uh, but we don't know if that's common or not. So we want to find as many planets as we can, we want to see how far they are from their stars uh, and see how common it is for something like life to actually emerge. Um, Daniel, just a technical question, how, is the, how does it work? We know it, it shoots uh, infrared signals, so yeah, just very technically. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. break it down for, for, sure. for, for us. Sure, of course. So, so a normal uh, optical telescope, something like SALT, which you mentioned, just looks at the optical wavelength. So that's just visible light that we can see with our eyes. Uh, and when you look out on a very, very dark night at the center of our Milky Way, you'll see these dust light lanes. Uh, and so that's very dark areas, even though there are lots of stars there. And that's because there's a lot of dust in the center of our galaxy, which we can't look through with optical light. So what this telescope does is it looks in the infrared. So it's a slightly longer wavelength to what we can see with our eyes. Um, and what it can do then is cut straight through that dust and access all of the stars at the center of our Milky Way and look at those ones for, for exoplanets. Thank you very much. Daniel Kahneman, of course, from uh, Dr. Uh, you know, is uh, attached to SAOO. I hope, Nampu, that it's a bit clearer now for you and for, for us. So uh, very different from SALT and, of course, from the SKA. And they're looking for exoplanets uh, using infrared technology. Nampu? Thanks very much, Ulrich. I think one may need to read a little bit more about it. But thank you so much for that report, my colleague there, Ulrich Hendricks. And finally, New Yorkers rang in the Lunar New Year at Chinatown's annual firecracker ceremony.